Well, all right. Uh, thank you for joining me here today, Dad. We're turning the tables around. Uh oh. <laughs> um, I obviously grew up in the sound world and know a lot about sound while also knowing very little about the actual components of sound because I just picked up a lot of stuff along the way. So I thought it would be kind of cool to do some videos of dad teaching me some very like basic sound things. And he doesn't know what I'm gonna ask him today, but we have some drinks and I thought it would be cool to have him teach me about a topic. So. Dad, I want you to go into That's today. Good. Oh, I'm glad. I made some <laughs> Moscow mules. Uh, I want you to go into today the basics of cables and how they work, why they're built, the way they're the way they're built. And yeah, I just thought that would be something that I have no idea. Like I know that they work and I know what cables work with what, but I don't know why there's the three pin XLRs and I don't know what the cat tail why it has all those little things. I build them. I build so many of them. I don't know why they're built the way they are built. So I thought that might be kind of cool. I would love to dive into cables. Um, there's a lot of cables out there. So Want to just start a... with XLR? XLR will work. That's a good one. That's a really, um... yeah, it's a good cable. All right, cool. We'll go grab some stuff and... Well, I'll just do it right now. Oh, he's well, got, just going to go grab it. Um... <laughs> nice to do and let's set it up is um, if we're gonna do it we should have maybe we should do the GoPro okay cool so then why don't we set up a little scene and we'll come back um, and, okay. and pause okay okay we're right. back we're gonna look at some XLR cables yeah we'll get into how XLRs work and why they exist in the way they do um, Moscow mule cheers cheers um, great to talk audio. How lucky am I to get, talk, to, get <laughs> to talk audio nerdery with my daughter? Hmm. Oh, this is good stuff. Okay, so um, XLR cables, they kind of evolved over the years. Mm -hmm. um, we actually have some mics. Uh, mics, I have some older mics that don't even have XLRs on them. Uh, cheaper mics used to have quarter inch jacks. Oh. And they would have something like a either a tuchel connector or a little coaxial connector, a little uh -huh. screw jack, and it would come out and go to a quarter inch jack. Mm. And um, older mic, and then like I have these old EV 666s that have a D connector on them that look like, in fact, w while we're live, I'm just going <laughs> to move this out here. I'll just grab Ooh. it. Ooh. Check this out. Happen to have one right here. Um, oh yeah, it's just the magic. This is a, this is the predecessor mice. to the RE twenty. Look at that! It looks oh. like an XLR, but an XLR won't fit in no. it. No, it's a, called a D connector. We can show that here. And this D connector, it actually doesn't have a set screw. You can actually push that little spring button mm. and pull it out. It's oh. not even tightened in. And then actually, and then the inside of these mics. Some old mics are cool because they have different impedance sweat settings up. Look at that. It's the mic of the beast. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so they didn't, hadn't settled. When these were out, they hadn't settled on, on XLR standard. as yeah. a standard yet. Uh, there's another connector called a Tuchel connector, uh -huh. which was came from Europe, I believe, and it's on some older gear, and it's um, a three-pin, but... There's three pins that goes in, and there's a little slot, and the lines, and it screws on. Mm -hmm. um, mm. So it, it, it's kind of cumbersome of evolution over the years, and then standard on, standardized on um, the Two. XLR. And I believe XLR is just, I, I haven't looked it up, but I kind of vaguely remember it just being a model number. From like Canon, you know, That's it's crazy. like, uh, yeah. it's a part number and it just like frigid air and yeah. it's stuck. That's um, really, I always assumed that it was like one pin was the X, one pin was the L, one pin was the R. That's funny, yeah. But like, I don't know what just, XLR stands for. No, I don't either. I'd probably somebody would know that. Maybe comment, let us know. Yeah. Okay, in any case, uh, let's look at what kind of what evolved here. Here's a microphone capsule. This came out of, a, I think, a sure. 55s mm -hmm. 
one of those like mics that I've got sitting over on the thing, the kind of cage, bird cage looking yeah, mics. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a newer version of the 55. So there's, you can see that there's a screw in the middle. That just holds it together. Mm -hmm. And then there's a red one that's marked with some red Sharpie. And then another <laughs> one that's not marked with a Sharpie. And another one that's got some conductor that goes to the screw. Mm -hmm. Very high end. Um, so this is the ground, mm -hmm. and the ground is just going to this metal housing. It connects to the outside of the mic and acts as a shield. It doesn't do anything as far as carrying the signal. It just prevents problems from, from happening. With electrical stuff. Mm -hmm. Then one of these attaches to an end of an electrical... I don't know if that comes... Oh, yeah, there you go. There's the diaphragm. Ooh. Oh, remember that sound we heard yeah. in that other video where we heard that sound? Yeah, that's so much. <laughs> pop, pop, pop. That, that sound, yeah. that's, a, that's a resonant tone. Okay, so there's a coil of wire in there, and the coil of wire attaches one side to here and mm. one side to here. And when that coil of wire moves in the magnetic yeah. field, because there's a little ring and sitting in there, um, it generates electricity. Mm -hmm. Well, on the current wiring of XLR cables, which hasn't always been, we use pin two hot. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, pin two hot. Now, this red terminal should be the pin two, mm -hmm. which means a positive pressure. Oh, oh. A positive pressure moves this inward, and a positive voltage in, re in respect to the up oh. shows up on this terminal, which makes its way through some wires and shows up on pin two. And the negative voltage, when you push on it, uh -huh. shows up on pin three. And now when you when you make a sound, you go poof, it goes in and then out. So the yeah. first, remember we sit on we, yeah. we see it on the scope. Yeah. That first pulse is positive versus negative, and then that goes all the way through. So those are pin two and three, and that's pin one. Uh huh. So one is ground, two is hot, three is as as cold, but it's also a hot wire. Yeah. It's out of in polarity, out okay. of polarity, and ground. Mm -hmm. And so then those go into the connector, and then we can see. Pin, pin three two. is always the one in the middle. Yeah. Ground is on one side, hot's on the other, or plus or in polarity. Yeah. Not polarity. Yeah. Um, uh, I yeah. always remember it as because when I'm soldering these, I go tweed. This is the tweed one. This is the second pin is red. That's, what, that's a. Uh, yeah. that's, I haven't heard that, but it's great. <laughs> Ground mm. is one, two is tweed, three is the other one. So, part of the reason. Old mics used to, not all conductors from, uh, connectors or cables from mics are three conductors. Mm -hmm. um, old mics used to use just a standard um, two pin, like a regular uh, yeah. a quarter inch jack. And you can convert from one to the other by tying pin three to shield. So this is basically ungrounded. It's No, it's grounded. It is grounded. Pin two. Pin one and three. I see. Okay. But the ground just is not like The ground. This is and... always the ground I and see. pin three is tied to ground. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, so that makes an unbalanced cable. An unbalanced cable. One of the beauties of balancing. What balanced cable is they take all three conductors. They take the shield. Mm -hmm. And they and the the two conductors and they run them all separate down the cable. Yeah. Okay. The shield protects it from noise, and then the two conductors. When it gets to the mic preamp, when it gets to the input mm -hmm. of the console, now what do you do with it? You've got the ground. Well, the ground is just a protector. Yeah. Then you've got these two signals. Well, what it will do is it takes one of the signals. It takes the ground as a reference point. It takes one of the signals that's out of polarity, flips it in polarity, adds mm. it together. It looks at, actually, let me rephrase that. It looks at the difference between those two signals. Oh, okay, got it. Looks it looks at the difference oh, and it okay. amplifies the difference between them. And this is kind of like how we were talking about radio waves working if, in a way of um, sending the, the, that, that, Super oh, directional. about modular, modulation. Yeah. yeah. Similar, you draw a line there. Um, I'll have to think about that. So if we We have, can come back to that at a different yes. time. Yeah. Um, so the, the microphone preamp looks at the difference between the two, uh -huh. uh, the voltage. So if this was a 9-volt battery, that would be 
the plus and the minus. The yeah. plus and the minus. So, Got it, yeah. And then you'd have 9 volts. Well, this is a 9-volt battery, but it's changing from 0 volts to 1 volt. And to that negative one transfers volt to plus. into information. And that's the information. Got it. We talk. Okay, so does that kind of answer your question on... It kind of does, yeah. I mean, okay, so we have... And I'm still not completely clear on why this is not as good as the XLR, but I understand why the XLR is the way it is. Um, yeah, no, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, another aspect of the XLR is the XLR is a, the three conductor, not necessarily an XLR. Now, the XLR is just a really robust connector. It's just yeah. a really... Solid. Yeah, it connects, it clips, it locks, it protects mm -hmm. the environment. You can drop them, you can bang them, they don't mess up. So yeah. it's kind of evolved to be the pro Standard. audio preferred yeah. um but it, any three conductor connector will Got work it. yeah now one of the beauties of this is that if on the old mics they would just tie these two together they would have a plus and they would tie the minus and the ground together uh -huh. and it. there would just be two conductors mm-hmm but with an XLR conductor, an XLR cable or a three-pin cable, if noise gets influenced upon it, oh, mm -hmm. and you have two wires, and they're equal and opposite, and noise oh. shows up, and noise is the same noise shows up on both of them, and the input to the mic preamp I is see. looking at the difference between the two, but the noise is the same on both. Which I would love to know how that works on another video because that's also mind-boggling, but that makes sense. The XL, the, not the XL, the three conductor, King, yeah. balance, it's called a balanced line. Mm, the mm -hmm. balanced lines have a noise canceling Cancellation. aspect. So, which we wouldn't see on something like this. Um, actually, on this you On would. this one, because that's a three. On yeah, this one. You wouldn't, yeah. Got it. Because this is a more refined quarter inch jack uh this is just another three pin connector okay this so will that's replace just, you could use you could use that instead of an xlr yeah it just doesn't lock it doesn't lock and then well. they Got have it. locking quarter inch Those but are then bummers. they bend yeah you know so it's just but you could easily replace so that works just as well it's just on the road it's not as useful this has been the standard yeah. but you can go to a quarter inch trs Tip ring sleeve, uh -huh. or a TS tip sleeve, where you've got a two conductor cable. That makes sense. Now, one of, then it gets more a little more tricky because this same connector is used for headphones. Yeah. Where headphones are ground, right, left. Mm hmm And yes. if this is used for a mic cable, this is it wants to. ground. Out of polarity, in polarity. Mm -hmm, yeah. And if you plug headphones into a balance line out, you get in polarity in one ear and out of yeah. polarity in the other. So it, so there's two different usages. That's so interesting. Two, the same connector is used for it's multiple, multiple things. Yeah. And you can do the same thing with XLR. You can use it for a headphone cable. So it's really handy if you need a long headphone cable is to convert oh. the quarter inch to an XLR, run a really long mic cable, and then convert it back oh. to quarter inch on the other side. That's cool. And you can cool. use mic cables to make that makes long sense. headphone jacks. That makes sense. Cool. Wow. Mind blown about XLRs. <laughs> uh, awesome. Cool. Well, that was successful. Cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. I learned things. I hope You've somebody... been making these cables forever. Yeah. And... Um, you make the, um, and you know, in the uh, cattail stuff, in the sound yeah. tool stuff you make, mm. the that's really interesting because they don't, with uh, RJ45 cable, you've got a shield, and yeah. then you've got the eight wires inside. Yeah. Not the super cat sound cable, but yeah, the regular yeah. super cat cable. And those individual pairs, there's no shield on each one, there's only a shield overall, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And it totally relies purely on the twisted pairs and yeah. the balanced lines to stop all the noise. That's, and I, that's like gonna be the next video because I don't know what you mean. I like, it's wild to me that they can just pick up sound that they just like want to. So we need to go into that, but that's a whole nother video. Oh, just like noise can get on them? Yeah. 
How does it get there? How does it get there? It's we should talk connected. about it. It's oh. not connected. But that's a whole other video. All right. Well, we, uh, we can set up some tests for that yeah, too. Yeah, cool. Fun. All right. All right. Thanks, Sam. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs>